Since the inception, the head of the Dhaka Nao family were always at the help of Sasarimullah orphanage. Now with Bega Masalullah gone, would you be interested in filling that vacuum position? Well, nobody has asked me to fill in that <laughs> vacuum position. <laughs> you again put me on a very tricky wicket as they say. And to uh, safeguard the property of the for orphans, orphans, yes, I would do if if I ever requested by any government of Bangladesh or any other or any other country. I mean, for for human humanitarian sake, of course I would, but but I would not be. I would go to manage the affairs. Right. I mean, I don't think that it would be my personal property. That they, they, you know, I have to answer at the end of the day when I'm dead and gone. <laughs> so, so yeah. for sure, yes, of course I would do that if, if I've been ever asked. Why do you disassociate yourself from the association? Well, I mean, you have taken a, a it appears that you have taken a different stance, yeah, different approach from the rest of the family. Well, there are two things here, you know, Anas, I mean, let me point out. What is B? Benefit, they say it's the Beneficiaries Estate Association. The beneficiaries of what? I mean, to me, I don't have any rights at the moment. I'm fighting the government. Mm -hmm. What uh, the association is fighting amongst itself most of the time, or the other, you know, the different groups, and I don't want to be part of that. I want to be above the local politics of our family, to you know, so that you know, <laughs> because at the end of it, I was, I mean, you could have it in their hand. I mean, no, but then you see, you have to understand, being a Nawab, joining the club, yeah, being okay. the Nawab puts you in a very awkward situation. With the ways for me, right. especially because neither do I have the political clout, right. nor the power, nor the financial back, uh, backing to do anything. But yet, I have to distance myself to keep that if any time ever comes a situation that one should be above all this, so that if, say, tomorrow you come and say, Like the you, head. Yes, or, yeah, exactly. And you have to be above. Being a head means you are the head of everything. Right. So you must be have to rise above. The rise above. You cannot take sides and be. You know. You you have to be able to be seen in a position where you can dispense any form of justice if you can, if right. if it is possible, without taking any sides right. or being partial. You have to be impartial in your right. you know way. Now, if I take association, then somebody else from my family will tell me that you can turn around and say, oh, you become you are part of them, not a part of us. But you're my family member as much as anybody else. So that 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 is one, you know, situation that I don't want to take any side on that. I mean, the next question: shed some light on ongoing and past litigations, which involve lawsuits against your kin. Well, there've been many. I mean, this is not something new. You started; it had been around. I mean, but how do you feel? Uh, I mean. I think initially the lawsuits were amongst family members or between an Arab and his siblings or this and that. This is the first time that there has been a case filed against the very body, the, the government, saying that this is my demand or this is, as far as I'm concerned, and anyone else can go and do it, but please rectify the injustices that have gone on for 100 years. I mean, there's a limit to injustice. This is, I today have no home, nothing in Bangladesh, fine, I am willing to accept that. But I should have the right to file and seek justice, which I have done. And you said there have been many cases where nobody has fought or nobody has gone against any government, whether it is the British Indian government or the Pakistan right. government or the Bangladesh government. It's true. So that's the differentiation I find uh, between my case and everybody else's. I only want my right, nothing else. Right. And it's up to the judges to decide. And how do you envision Askari Jutmi, the dream of your father, to be free of Somali Bank's loan? Ah. <laughs> <laughs> and when nationalization took place, I don't know if you know this, my father was still managing director of, of the Jute Mills until 1974. So the government thought it wise at that time, including Sheikh Mujib, thought it wise that to keep him to run the mills, and it was a profitable mill. Right. Today, unfortunately, through vagrancies of life, it has gone into the hands of different various people. Including and yourself, no? You mm -hmm. served as more of a member of Askari Jutmi. I'll tell you. When, time. No, no I, I served only one brief period. And the brief period that I came in, 
Jamil was totally shut within a liability of about 100 crore taka, uh -huh. which is of course maybe inflated by the banks, but uh, that's not for me to write now. There was nothing there. Electricity was being cut off. There was about 70, 80 lakh taka bill. No, no workers there. Nothing. It was ghost. It was a ghost factory or a ghost mm -hmm. mill. I went in um, at that time with the help of Khazar Farid, late Khazar Farid. He, he went and met General Nuruddin and uh, he gave us the line. We started, but we immediately we started getting all kinds of obstacles. Okay. The local MP at that time was General Shafiullah. Yeah. And for some reason he had it against me for running the mill. And while I was running it, I had to face multiple obstacles including my goods being stolen, people storming inside the mill, 300 people coming in with caters, guns, bombs exploding, many cases and nothing happening. All I tried to do was get my own whole thing working to run the mill so that I could export and I did manage to export. I was done putting it to a position where from zero lumage I brought it up to 274 looms. And that, that is, I think, uh, from nothing Quite a big success. Uh, for me. But then, due to the politics of the place, you, you see, you can't do politics and the, the, uh, running an industry yeah. like that. It's, uh, you know, because it doesn't work. Business should be left alone. Yeah, business has to be separated from the po politics. You may need political other affiliations, that is a separate issue. But if you start interfering in the industry of it, then nothing will work. What happened today it is. It's like, a, it's, it's like the, um, uh, the Titanic, right. you know, it, it's sinking, it's, it's not slowly it is sunk and I don't know what will happen. I mean, I keep hearing rumors about it being sold and... Uh, as of last week. As of last week or as of today it's been sold, it's been sold and uh, my point is fine, fair enough, you, this, is, this, is, this property is not anybody's personal property. My father did, could have set up a... a, a this is, as far as I know, uh, Ali Mullah officer's Absolutely, property. Absolutely, 100%. So which is a no, wafilillah. Yes. It, that means a public charitable institution. Right. So no, uh, but people I found, people have used it and maneuvered it for their own benefits. And okay, fine, you use your benefits, I can understand. But not to the point where you've bankrupted a company or an industry where thousands of uh, workers, our family members could have been part of or were part of. A lot of people worked there. Mm -hmm. And today it has become nothing but the Titanic. So uh, I don't see uh, any good coming out of it right now. I mean, I, it's, it's sad, but my father's, all of my father's dreams have been shattered. shattered. Not only shattered, but they've been finished. <laughs> so How do you balance between reality and expectations? Well, the reality of the matter is that now Dhaka has been reduced to nothing. But it is, you see, with the title was an institution. Right. If it's left to me, I would institutionalize it. Huh? And by when I say institutionalize, it means that not only the wealth, the power, but the very position so that, you know, tomorrow future generations can be benefited. And not only, I don't mean only by family members which of course are necessary Primary part of beneficiary. The they would be but general public right. when wealth is created after a certain time and position it is becomes an onus upon the person who's say head of the family or head of that institution to carry forth with that wealth other things you know you can like Yaga Khan or many other heads who, right. who would then like invest in, 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 you know, maybe say water for life programs or educational programs and many other programs which take place. What's your uh, future plan? Well, uh, my mother would sing to me when I was a child and say, okay, sarah, sarah, it's not for us to know. But I mean, my future plan right now is I'm here in America, away in exile from Bangladesh as such due to various constraints of politics and various other reasons uh, that I'm not going back. So I will be here temporarily, I'm here sometime. And uh, God only knows what uh, yeah. what may come about. Uh, I, I mean, I'm open to anything. I, I'm, a, I'm a reasonable human being with reasonable uh, thoughts. And uh, I, I believe, as you said initially, 
the difference between reality and, uh, 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 and um, uh, what expectations. Yeah. expectations. I think I've lowered my expectations and reality, yes, uh, being an idealist, I was before and now I've become a conformist in understanding that the ways of the world is different from being an idealist and therefore I would uh, obviously be more conducive in working and understanding the systems of life and, and how to bring about uh, change if necessary in, in, in a different way instead of being just a reactionary or a, you right. know, you, you have to do things in a positive systematic manner with the establishment and established orders. Did you ever see Dalia Inu personally and what would be your emotional state if you were to hold the diamond right now? Mm, on the first question, no, I've never seen the Dalia Inu personally, no. I haven't seen it, I, uh, I've heard about it, my father, every, a lot of other family members, everybody's spoken about it, but I've uh, never seen it. Uh, and if I held it, I suppose at this juncture of my life, after many trials and tribulations, I would hold it and think, well, this is the famous Dari I know, and I'm holding it, and I'm the Nawal Dhaka, it should be mine. <laughs> That's being honest. Thank you very much. I, I, it's a pleasure. I must thank you so much, and I want to say one thing. I, I don't know how others say, but you have done a wonderful, wonderful yeah, it's job. Yeah, our team. I mean, uh, Your whole yeah. team, you have done something I don't think others have done in the world, and, and it is... Really, I congratulate you for Thank my you. soul and spirit. Thank you. I can't it's say very nice of you. No, no, it, is, it is a pleasure. Thank you. Thank you. Okay.